Hi, fourth graders. This is Miss Hoffman. Today, we're going to be talking about di what digital citizenship means. So in school, one of the things that teachers teach you is how to be a good citizen. And being a good citizen means being respectful, being responsible, and being safe. Now, even though we're not at school, we can still be good citizens. And we can do so by being a good digital citizen. And the same rules apply to a digital citizen as they do for a real life citizen in the community. So being a good digital citizen means being safe, respectful, and responsible. Being a good digital citizen is very important as we're doing this virtual schooling. You need to learn how to Learn, communicate, and collaborate with your peers and with your teachers in a safe and responsible way, as well as being able to complete your work and submit it digitally to your teacher. So those are two ways of being a digital citizen, a good digital citizen. In fourth grade, we have high expectations of you. And like I said before, this is being safe, being responsible, and being respectful. Part of being responsible is meeting your teachers at your class meetings at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. We would love it if you could join us for those meetings with your homerooms. Miss, Mrs. Moore meets with her class at 9 o'clock and I meet with my homeroom at 9 o'clock and then we swap just like we would at school where Mrs. Moore meets with my homeroom at 10 o'clock and I meet with Mrs. Moore's homeroom at 10 o'clock. Make sure you're entering those meetings with your mic and your camera turned off. The reason for this is when you have meetings with a lot of people on that WebEx Teams, it can get very, very hard to understand when there is more than one person with their mic on as well as more people with their cameras on. So make sure that your camera is off so that you can always see the teacher's face. And make sure that you're always listening carefully during those meetings because a lot of times we will go through what is expected you of you during those days. Something that I've noticed is that some students are muting other people. Make sure that you are only muting yourself and that you are not muting any other person on that meeting group. Let the teachers be the people who are muting other people. We don't want to make, we don't want to have problems with that. Another important thing to note is that WebEx is an app that is used for school and not personal use. So we are able to use WebEx because the district allows us to. So that means it is not like Snapchat, it is not like texting on your phone, it is not like Twitter or Facebook. It is only supposed to be used for school. Please do not chat back and forth with your classmates, whether that is on your class space or a personal space. Please do not create a space to chat with other students. Finally, please do not put, post social pictures or GIFs. We love cute pictures, Mrs. Moore and I love GIFs. However, we want to make sure that this WebEx is a place for learning and questions and not getting clogged up with GIFs or pictures. Being responsible and getting your work done is part of being a smart digital citizen. So incomplete work means that no work is submitted. We are checking all of our apps throughout the day to make sure that students are doing the work. So we're checking Google Classroom. Mrs. Moore is checking Matific and Khan Academy and Extra Math. We want you to continue to track how many minutes you spend on those apps and know that Mrs. Moore will be checking those as well. And Mrs. Moore and I will both be checking on Google Classroom to make sure that you are accessing the material on there and that you are progressing through it. Just like in school, there are no excuses for not doing your work and submitting it. If you're having problems, if you're having technical difficulties, please contact us 
and let us know and we can help you with any of those problems. We can find a way that will allow you to get the work done still. So make sure that one of your biggest responsibilities is getting that work done. Right here, we've posted a possible schedule of the day for you. This is not a mandatory schedule. This is not the schedule that you have to go by, but this is something that Lowell has set up for families to look at in case families are struggling with getting a schedule going. So you can look at this schedule and see if this works for you. So the possible schedule could go as eight o'clock, wake up, get ready, get dressed, get out of your pajamas, and making sure that at nine o'clock you're ready for your WebEx meetings. So we have nine o'clock math or literacy, 10 o'clock math or literacy, and then at 11 o'clock we have specialist, specialist choice. So that's your, your gym, your music, your art, making sure that you're getting onto those Google Classrooms and seeing what work is to be done on those as well. Make sure you're taking lots of breaks during your day. We don't want students staring at screens all day. Make sure you're getting up, you're going for a walk if you're able to, or playing with your siblings or your pets, or doing some reading for fun playing a game. Make sure that you are taking frequent breaks so that your brain can relax. My, my opinion is to do maybe an hour of work, take a break. Do another 45 minutes of work, take another break. Make sure you're taking frequent breaks throughout your work time so that your brain has a little bit of time to relax. At 2 o'clock we would like you to do a final check on your assignment. So if there's something that you haven't gotten the chance to do at that point, make sure that you're checking through everything at that two to three o'clock point in time. Make sure that you're checking on your assignments, make sure that you're asking those questions if you're unsure of what to do, and make sure at three o'clock you're checking back into WebEx group for any of the announcements. Teachers will be on there at around three o'clock, 3.30, to make sure that you are getting what you need and or to post any announcements that they need to post. We are all at home, which means that you might not have a designated spot to do your studying. studying. And it's really important to find even a little corner of your house that you can have as your space with all of your materials that you need. So it's important to find a space that will be a regular spot that you gather to to do your work. Like for me, it's my kitchen table. Maybe Mrs. Moore has a spot in her living room. It could be in your room. Make sure that you have a little spot that you can do your work at and that will make it easier for you to get motivated. So there are five tips to get you started on your virtual learning at home. So the first is what I talked about before, creating a study space. Number two is getting rid of distractions. For me, that's putting my phone away during my office hours from 9 to 11 so that I can put all of my attention on you. So if you have another phone or another tablet or another iPad that you use for fun, my suggestion was, would be to put that away during your schooling time and then take it out for breaks. Number three is take breaks. Take some short little breaks. If that means doing a go noodle or checking out what's happening um, with your family, that is a good idea. Your brain needs breaks, especially when you're staring at a screen for a while. The fourth tip is to gather all of your school supplies in one spot. I've put all of my school supplies in a box right next to the table so that I have everything I need for my day. That's a good idea to make sure you're not running back and forth trying to find your supplies. And number five is something that I'm sure you've all have found to be very important, which is charging your iPad and making sure that you do updates on it. Now that you're at home with your iPad charger, it should be much easier for you to make sure that you have your iPad charged at all time. And remember, throughout this process, Mrs. Moore and I are here to help. If you're having problems, if you're confused with things, we are happy to help. 
Just like how we spend so much time within our classrooms trying to make them safe and great communities, we want to make sure that our virtual learning is as safe and as kind as we can make it. So just like how we would not accept any type of bullying or unkind behavior in the classroom, we do not accept cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is unacceptable. Make sure you are always treating each other with kindness and respect on WebEx, on email, making sure that you are saying only kind things during this time. Make sure you are staying on task. That's part of being respectful and responsible. Use the programs as they were meant to be used. Use that WebEx just as a way for you to communicate with your teacher and ask questions. If we find that you are off task, if you are someone who is continuously posting GIFs or posting silly pictures or commenting or making other spaces to just chat, you may lose your privileges. So tech use is a privilege. It is not a right. Make sure you are following those expectations just like you would at school. On this slide, we have a really cool video that you can watch if you would like. It's about 30 minutes long and it's about how to be safe online. It's kind of a cartoon type movie. There is a requirement to fill out the Google form that is linked on the bottom of this slide. It's on the link that says Google form. So please complete that Google form that's linked here so that we know that you followed through with the presentation and that you're understanding what we are teaching you. I hope that this makes your expectations clear about what we expect from you online. Have a great rest of your day.